Direction for Life, brought to you by the College of St. Scholastica. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Northland News Center special report. I'm Barbara Ryle. Just as the cast of the NBC blockbuster show ER signs off, we're taking a look at a real-life crew of health care providers reaching out to those in need across the world. A group of graduate student nurses from the College of St. Scholastica in Duluth has just returned from a humanitarian care mission to the poverty-torn jungles of Belize. News Center weekend anchor Julie Kiss is also a nursing student at St. Scholastica. She traveled with the students to Belize to share her nursing skills, plus gather video to tell the story of this heartfelt mission of mercy. In only two weeks, these 13 St. Scholastica nursing students built nine makeshift clinics in nine different villages and treated over 600 patients. Sit hot. <laughs> and it's been a great day. We've seen a lot of things. And I hope that it continues to be like this. It's been such a great experience. In each clinic, patients were triaged. Is it dizzy because of the headache? A record system was developed. <laughs> Two, four. A pharmacy was established. Oh, what do you need? Um, worrying, relax, dose, uh, trace. Vitals were collected, wounds were dressed and cleaned. And people were screened for diabetes and hypertension. But it didn't stop with that. We just advertised diabetes, blood pressure, and HIV and AIDS, and you guys are giving a lot more than that. Up have them set it down and rest it. Okay, it's gonna hurt. Because we found people with incredible problems with um, skin diseases, skin infestations, mental health problems, um, people with pneumonia, people with um, colds and flu, and sometimes just people who want to talk to some Americans. We're in the village of Santa Marta where health care is hard to come by. Behind me, this is one of the first few clinics that we set up. If you come inside, you'll see some of the action going on. We've got some of the students over here. We've got some of the patients that are in here. And what was an empty building earlier this morning has now come to life. I sit in the jungle amid the sounds of the rainforest, listening through my stethoscope to a beating heart. Children are in the distance playing, and the chatter of other patients fills my ears creating the blend of the perfect symphony, a compliment to the harmony of healing taking place. There's a lot of magic happening here. And we bond with them, we connect with them. And the mothers just hand over their children, and even if their kids are crying, their mothers are like, no, these people are gonna help. And Little Julie hasn't been to school for the last month because it was just too painful to walk. Come to find out that she hadn't been walking because she had ha had a um, large sebaceous cyst in her groin area that was probably, I would say, um, bigger than a tennis ball. And it had been festering for so long that her skin was actually starting to pull apart. There was a number of us that went over and just the pain that she was in, she couldn't even stand. And I remember looking at our instructor at one point and thinking, I know we don't have exactly what we need to make it better, but we have to do something. And so they did the best they could with the supplies they had. Somebody yep. grabbed a, a warm pack and some gloves. Yep. Even though the procedure that we did to drain it was so painful and you could just see the look in her eyes how painful it was. And she seemed to understand that, that this was what was making her sick and not feel well and unable to walk. <laughs> And after a second visit, the cyst had drained to half its original size, and Julie was back on her feet. She was probably one of the strong, strongest children I've ever known. Um, she faced it head on. In Belize, Julie Pierce, the Northland News Center. It was an incredible mission of mercy, plus a fantastic learning opportunity for the student nurses. Well, we've asked a couple of St. Scholastica leaders to join us now to tell us more about this outreach program, plus more about the various opportunities offered to students at the College of St. Scholastica. And joining us is the Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Beth Domholt, and the President of the College of St. Scholastica, Larry Goodwin. Thank you both very much for coming in today. One cannot watch that piece, Beth, without feeling so moved by the care being provided. Right. It's just 
an incredible experience for those students who have often come into healthcare thinking about working in the developed world with high tech equipment and such as that and to experience a completely different side of healthcare in a different context is just so broadening for them in terms of what it means to be a service provider, a healthcare provider. Is this a typical kind of thing that the nursing program offers, Larry? I would say it's a particularly vivid expression of the college's mission. There are a lot of uh, different opportunities. I would say this one is distinctive. We have a program in Cuernavaca that our students uh, study abroad for a semester and get involved in working with the poor. We have another program in Tanzania where students again get involved working with uh, the poor. But I think this Believe program uh, is, is a new one for the nursing department and is an expression of the overall college mission, which is to take your education and your knowledge and do something good with it and be of service to others. Beth, I have to ask after watching that, what is more beneficial? the help provided in Belize or the incredible experience gathered by these nurses who have learned to do so much with so little? I, I think you, you can't really say it's more one or the other. Yeah. And the beauty of what, what we now term service learning is that the activities serve both a purpose outside of the education as well as having a legitimate educational purpose for the students and when we can do that whether it's in nursing whether it's in social work whether it's with our school of business and technology students we are accomplishing that service learning that is part of helping students understand their purpose in life that their education isn't just about acquiring technical knowledge and skills it's about how you apply it to whom you apply it, under what circumstances you do. And if you can do all of that education while serving legitimate human needs, either in Duluth, in the region, or around the world, that's just magical. Well, Beth mentioned this service learning, and, and she's suggesting, Larry, that this is not unique to just the nursing program. Is service learning something that you do in other programs at St. Philosopher's College? We, we do, yes. I mentioned a couple of other study mm -hmm. abroad opportunities for students from all disciplines, and many courses will build in civic engagement or serving service learning as a component mm -hmm. of the course. It, all the research shows that it's a very powerful learning tool for many students. I would say three quarters of the students who go to that Cuernavaca program, when they come back, they are transformed. They, they see now that they can take the power of their education and do something in the world that they are motivated to do. It's, it's a very, uh, you know, underneath it all, students want to make a contribution. Yeah. And when, they, when you give them the opportunity and show them the need, their education absolutely comes alive. Tell us a little bit more about this Cuernavaca program. Well, it's uh, a program whereby uh, a group of our students go down in the fall of each year. In the fall, but we also have smaller groups that go in January, and we've got a group going in May this year. So we have both a semester-long program as well as a couple shorter okay. programs. And they live in uh, a little residential compound that has been put together by <laughs> a man who was a farmer in Canada and got bitten by doing good in the world and doing social justice. And he went to Cuernavaca mm -hmm. and he has connected with a lot of the people who are trying to change the power structures in Cuernavaca. Uh, a lot of the people who are trying to work with the poor and for mm -hmm. uh, more even distribution of power and so on. And he gets these students in touch with all of these folks in the various sectors who come and give lectures. And then the students uh, actually do work in orphanages or schools. And a couple of our faculty go on the trip as well, and the students are able to go to school mm -hmm. in the more traditional sense of the classroom. 
all so of this wrapped together. Serving both masters there, yeah. mm -hmm. e education and the service. Uh, y these experiences that you're talking about, and certainly what we've seen in the Belize stories, they've got to have altered the lives of these these students. What do you hear when the kids come back from these missions? Well, you hear just a, a wide range of things. For some students, it's the first time they been out of the country. Yeah. It's the first time they've had a passport. So, so some is just very basic, broadening experience of the world. Um, for others, it's the first time they've ever been in a developing country. So the first time that they get some perspective on how privileged we are here in the United States. And, and it really changes their conception of themselves as, I'm a poor college student who look at all the resources that I have available to me and look at all the opportunities. So it, it gives just a vastly different view of the world and their place in it. Sort of sets their course for the rest of their mm -hmm. lives. Well, we need to take a quick break, but the nursing program offered at Saint, uh, College of St. Scholastica go, as we said, well beyond classroom learning, and we'll continue to look at the school's hands-on approach after the break. Well, we've been talking about an incredible program in which graduate students at the College of St. Scholastica in Duluth take their skills to places where the need is so great that at times it can be almost heartbreaking. A group of St. Scholastica nursing students recently returned from the jungles of Belize where disease is rampant and the need is ferocious. Our weekend anchor, Julie Pierce, is about to graduate from the St. Scholastica nursing program and was among the student nurses in Belize, and as the journalist she is, she documented her experience. There's always going to be things that stick out in your mind more than other things and um, images that you can't get out of your head. The sights, smells, and memories of a country thousands of miles away will not soon be forgotten by any of the St. Scholastica nursing students who spent two weeks in the jungles of Belize for the sake of making health care more accessible to the remote villages. When patients couldn't come to the clinic, the clinic would be brought to them. We have medicine. Okay. And it's getting deeper. Like a flood. Sometimes that meant hiking through unfavorable conditions just to discover critical circumstances. Some beyond the help we could offer. I mean, we've taken several people to the hospital who otherwise would not be able to get there. You know, blood sugars of 500, they die. Take, for instance, Severina and her daughter, Dahlia. She was about to lose her feet because of the diabetes, and she has a few kids which look like all of them are not healthy, and... Maybe we should go see. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, that would be a very good idea. We arrived at the family of seven's home. When I walked in, it took me back. It is very hard. I mean, it breaks your heart. As, as you see them, it breaks your heart to see the, this family. Upon removal of Severina's bandage, we discovered an advanced stage diabetic ulcer. We found uh, definite, definite necrotic areas in her feet. Uh, where the tissue is dying, black and scuffing off. Her blood sugar, critical. The glucometer won't even register how high it is. It just says high, which is actually an emergency and probably needs to get her to the hospital yeah. right away. Severina adamantly refused to go to the hospital, fearful they would remove her foot. If we at least get her blood sugar under control, and then it might not get infected. But if we don't do anything, the infection is either going to kill her or the high blood sugar will kill her. Yeah, she says she doesn't care. She, if she will die, she wants to die with her two, with her feet. <laughs> die with both feet rather than live with one. But if she's willing to at least get the medicine, we're at least battling back a little bit. Right now, we pretty much said we're giving up. You know, that's pretty much what she said is she's just waiting to die. Her family watches. One daughter suffering from an untreated illness herself. After some reasoning, Severina agreed to go to the hospital for the sake of getting specific diabetic medications to help control her disease and so that her daughter could be treated for what we suspected to be kidney failure. We took them both to the Belmopan Hospital in the capital of Belize. Advanced treatment began immediately. It was evident just how much the hospital's resources were suffering. Well, for right now, I think they are short of a lot of things, just like glucometers. 
The hospital doesn't even have the ultrasound machine necessary to examine Dahlia's kidneys. Going off site came at a price. To, to check all irregularities in the organs and stuff. And that costs money? Yeah. And yeah, how are private. We pay for that? Oh, I'm not sure. Fortunately, students were able to use their pool of money to fund the girl's procedure, and she received the treatment we so easily take for granted. It's stories like that which can both break your heart and inspire hope all at once. Uh, there is all, always hope. Um, yeah, there's always hope. Hope for the world. Hope that, that cultures get together and they work out things together. And while we may not be able to offer cures to heal the body, we can reach in and touch the soul. We put everything in God's hands. We have faith. <laughs> That's the thing. We have faith. In Belize, Julie Pierce, the Northlands News Center. And we have set up a link to the trip to blog on our website, northlandsnewscenter.com. It links to the College of St. Scholastica. And the College of St. Scholastica <coughs> emphasizes a mission that gives so much to people. And we're talking with leaders from the college, and we thank you both again so much for coming in. We were talking about a trip to Cuervaca, and you've actually had a chance to go along on some of these service missions. And, and, and you know, Beth was talking about how much it means to the students. It means a lot to the educators that go along. Tell us about that. Well, it means a lot to the educators. It mean, I think I have to say it means a lot to me to be fortunate enough to lead an institution that's committed to this kind of work. Uh, but one of the points I wanted to make, Barbara, is that um, I noticed in my trip to Cuernavaca that, um, which was about halfway through the semester, that the students were at the point of asking, uh, what is it that I have to learn from these people? Not only what can I provide, yeah. but they would say things like, I've never seen such poverty before, but these families are so happy. As if to say, what have I missed? Yeah. <laughs> that, that they have in such abundance, although they have practically nothing else. So I think we shouldn't underestimate um, how much the students take from these trips as well as give. And, and the giving part, though, is really quite incredible. What those and we, ta we saw instances there where lives were saved because of the College of Saint Scholastica nursing <coughs> students over there. So uh, there's something to be said on on both for what yeah. they give and what they take. The the School of Nursing at the College of Saint Scholastica has developed a, a real reputation across the Midwest for quality programming. Is it things like this, or what is it about the program? It's things like this, but it, it builds on everything that we do. So we have a full range of nursing programs that are available. Mm -hmm. So we have our traditional undergraduate baccalaureate degree program, and we're preparing about 112 nurses um, each year who graduate in a traditional full-time undergraduate education. We also have this post-baccalaureate program that's that um, these students were in that program. And that program we developed a couple years ago to try to help meet the region's need for registered nurses. And what this program is, is it's a fast track program for students who already have a bachelor's degree in something else. Yeah. But at some point later in their education or later in their career, they realize that nursing is really calling to them. And so they come through and with a very, very intense educational program of, of about 15 months, they can add the um, nursing education to the previous bachelor's degree that they already had. In addition to those programs that prepare entry-level nurses, we have an online RN to bachelor's program as well as some on-ground versions around the state that help associate degree nurses add their baccalaureate degrees in nursing. And then we have a whole range of advanced practice nursing programs where we're offering graduate education at either the master's or doctoral level for nurses who are uh, becoming nurse practitioners or clinical nurse specialists or are really going to be leaders in nursing and health system change. Well, Beth, you mentioned filling a, a niche that's so important because there is a critical shortage of uh, nurses. Is, is that the, the now, as the president of the college, do you look and say, all right, here's a professional area that really needs some attention the college is going to reach out and, and try to fill that niche. Is that something that the St. Scholastica does? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. we, you know, we, we have many programs that we offer, 
but the largest cluster of our programs is in healthcare. And that For was sure. the Benedictine Sisters got into healthcare yeah. as well as higher education here. And we absolutely see ourselves as uh, trying to serve the region in terms of graduating uh, competent professionals who have been shaped by these Benedictine values. So yes, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a very practical thing. There's a huge need. We can be of assistance in helping to meet it, and we will. Tell me about the value that's taken from these service missions. Um, we talk about the Benedictines and their, their, uh, their need to see service in health care and so on. Is, is, do they take then these students from these service missions like the Belize thing, do they take that and put it into practice when they actually go out in the world like I'm assuring, I'm sure the uh, Benedictines sort of envision? I think they do. We get feedback from employers all the time, mm -hmm. whether it's our nurses, whether it's physical therapists, whether it's our teachers, whether it's our accountants, we get feedback that says, St. Scholastica students bring something extra with them to the workplace. So they're not just here doing the X, Y, Z job yeah. in front of them. Mm -hmm. They are bringing themselves, they're bringing their values, they're bringing a sense of how can I contribute in a greater sense to the common good? And that's part of what we think distinguishes the education we provide and therefore the type of employees that we provide to the region. How do you choose, you mentioned Cuernavaca and we've seen the Belize, how do you choose where to provide these service mission opportunities? Or Sometimes it's the passion of a particular faculty member who puts us on to something. In the case of Tanzania, there are some Benedictine monasteries. But a lot of times these things, frankly, are faculty driven. They, yeah. they scout them out, they come back, they tell us here's a good match and we've learned to trust them. And you go from there. Well, the College of St. Scholastica emphasizes a mission that gives more than just quality education, as Larry and Beth have said, but also a direction for life. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Well, thanks so much for watching us uh, on this Northland News Center special report today with the College of St. Scholastica, a recent humanitarian mission to the jungles of Belize to help the growing underserved population there has caught the attention and the hearts of many in the Northlands. A group of graduate nursing students shared the skills they're learning in the, the College of St. Scholastica nursing program with dozens of Belizeans who are in great need of medical attention. From children with unhealed, painful, debilitating sores to adults literally on their deathbeds in the outlying jungle regions, the students took the spirit of hope and healing from the campus halls to the back areas of Belize. And we are talking with the college president, Larry Goodwin, and vice president of academic affairs, Beth Domholt. And I, you know, I am just so proud that we had a chance to share this with our audience. We thank you both very much for letting us do this because what, what a tremendous, uh, wonderful program that is. And Beth, you and I were talking about I mean, the Belize program is certainly uh, an obvious example of the outreach, but this is something you're doing throughout the campus, throughout your programs. Yes, so that we have a number of different outreach programs that students go on. We have local programs, so we have, we're very involved with the grant school, with reading partners and after school programs. We had students this um, spring break doing alternate spring break trips to Appalachia building houses, to uh, the border um, with Mexico building houses. We have uh, students um, doing work in China, in Russia, and, and a number of different areas I just uh, got of the a, world. I I'm just sorry. got a letter from a parent today yeah. uh, about students who drove up to the Red River Valley to sandbag and uh, how impressed, now her son was one of them, but yeah. how impressed she was that they drove up four hours after class and sandbagged until four o'clock in the morning. Um, and I think that's another example close to home of this, this kind of outreach. As a matter of fact, we did a story in, uh, in uh, Fargo-Moorhead, and one of the volunteers sweating profusely in the cold uh, was a College of St. Scholastica student, just uh, randomly ran into him there. And uh, you're absolutely right. It does show the importance of uh, teaching this, these kinds of humanitarian feelings and how they can reach out. Now, also, you have your day of service where, I mean, we're talking about Belize and all these other countries, Mexico and so on, but 
but your kids serve right here too. Right, right in the city of Duluth. You know, you use an interesting phrase, um, what the Benedictine sisters envisioned yeah. when they founded the school. And I think that's, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, the idea that we would graduate students who were thoughtful professionals and had thought about the bigger questions in life and were willing to act on their behalf. Sure. So. And, and I want to uh, ask you about something else, because Beth mentioned uh, the importance of looking for an area where uh, quality, educated people are required, and then filling that niche. Tell us a little bit more about how you do that. The, the nursing program is a, a pretty vital example, but tell us how else you sort of scope out the need in the communities around here, and then look for ways to fill those needs. Well, another key example I think Beth mentioned on break is our work in electronic medical records. We had the first medical record baccalaureate program in the country in 1934, and we're really a national leader in electronic records today. And so we have taken several of our programs and we're parlaying them to help in this transformation that President Obama and Governor Pawlenty talk about all the time of moving into electronic medical records to improve quality of care and to save money for the taxpayers. So that's a big push of ours right now, too. Uh, how is enrollment right now? Strong. We're having our strongest year ever. Go figure. And, uh, uh, so how does the recession play into that? Well, in some respects, higher education is counter-cyclical because when people are unemployed or underemployed, they take the advantage they take mm -hmm. advantage of that time mm -hmm. to return to school, to strengthen their credentials, to look towards the future. And at Scholastica, we have not only traditional undergraduate residential education in Duluth, but we also have our graduate professional programs. We have our non-traditional adult programs on campuses around the state, and particularly our adult non-traditional um, programs and our graduate professional programs are programs that people are drawn to mm -hmm. in this kind of time. You kind of have so those something for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do, and Barbara said we're having our best year ever, but I don't want that to be interpreted that people are finding it easy to finance higher education yeah. today. And we're very sensitive to the uh, struggles that people are going through, and we're trying to take our own measures of keeping tuition down, of operating efficiently, we also provide all the aid we can, graduate students in four years, not five or six, yeah. and place them after graduation. So I'd, all of I'd that love counts. to sit and talk for another half hour, but I am afraid we are out of time. Um, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. We'll come back to wrap up this special report in just a moment. This has definitely been an interesting half hour, and we've had some wonderful programs talked about here. And programs like these deserve our special attention. We'd like to thank our guests. Thank you so much from the College of St. Scholastica. We appreciate your coming in, and thank you for watching.